Welcome back to the Physics Dojo. I'm Barry Panis, and today we're going to look at Newton's first law. Before turning our attention to Newton's first law, let's have a quick chat about the word force. In physics, a force is simply a push or a pull. So anything that can be described as being a push or a pull in the language of physics is a force. And we don't really have much of a need to distinguish between pushes and pulls, by the way. They're all forces to us. Forces are vectors. That means that they have a direction and a magnitude. You can push gently, you could push really hard. That would be the magnitude. Finally, you could push to the left or to the right, and again, that would be the directional aspect of the force. So forces are vectors, they have a magnitude and a direction. The unit of force is the newton. So if you push with a force of 3 newtons or 5 newtons or 10 newtons, the newton is serving as the unit of force. Finally, Sometimes we use the phrase net force. Net force is a phrase that means the sum of all forces that are acting. So if an object has one and only one force acting on it, that one force, by definition, is the net force. But if there are two or more forces acting on an object, then you'd have to take the sum of all of those forces, vectors, and have that be the net force. So the net force is the sum of all forces acting, and you have to add as vectors. Okay, so now let's clear up Newton's first law. Newton's first law simply says that there are two things that you want to keep track of. Net force, the sum of all forces acting on an object, and acceleration, the rate of change of velocity. Now, Newton's first law points out that these two things are related to each other. Net force and acceleration, in fact, go hand in hand. The way I like to describe it is, you can't have one without the other. If you have a net force, you have acceleration. If you have acceleration, you have a net force. If you don't have either one of those, then you don't have either. You can have them both, you can have neither, but you can't have just one of those two conditions, net force and acceleration. Here's a really simple simulation to help make sense of Newton's first law. In this simulation, I have a single object, it's a rectangle, and I have three controls for it. Initial velocity, and two forces that I can selectively apply if I choose, although at the moment they're both at zero. Got a stopwatch for time, and the simulation is in an idealized environment. There's no gravity right now, there's no air resistance, so what you see is what you get, just a single rectangle. If I run the simulation, it's working, the rectangle's not going anywhere, and we can make sense of this by Newton's first law. Newton's first law predicted, in fact, that with no net force, there would be no acceleration, which is exactly what we had. Now the mistake that students make frequently is that they'll say, aha, I told you, no net force, you're not going to be moving. That's not necessarily the case. Newton's first law, in fact, doesn't really have any comment on the value of the velocity at all. It happened to have a zero velocity, and so it happened to keep that velocity with no net force. Let me give it a non-zero velocity, something like five meters per second to the right. Now, there's still no net force acting. So with no net force acting, Newton's first law predicts that it will not accelerate. It has a velocity of five, which is fine, but it's not going to accelerate and running the simulation reveals that, a constant velocity of five meters per second. Now, this bothers a lot of students. They'll say, well, how can it be moving if there's nothing pushing it? And my response to that would be, you don't need a force to be moving. To get moving or to change your motion, you do require a force. So if we were to explore the history of this object, if it were a real object instead of a virtual object, a real object that was moving quite probably in the past did have some force acting to get it going especially if it was not going even earlier in its history. So running the simulation here, no net force, constant velocity. The value is not important in Newton's first law. Let's introduce a net force. So how about if I introduce a force by adding in a two Newton force to the right? So running the simulation, there is a net force. It's going to accelerate. So it's even going faster now. Faster and faster and faster. That's an acceleration to the right and Newton's first law predicted an acceleration because there was a net force to the right. Let's introduce a second force to the left of two Newtons. So this time there are two forces acting, two Newtons to the right, two Newtons to the left, adding those up reveals the net force of zero. We're right back to where we started of no net force. With no net force, you're not going to accelerate. The velocity can be any value, five, zero, negative 10, doesn't matter. Whatever the velocity is, you're going to keep that velocity. No net force, constant velocity. That is Newton's first law. 
Let's see how Newton's first law can be used in a practical sense when exploring the motion and forces acting on objects. So in this simulation, I have three objects, a rectangle, a square, and a circle. Now I don't see any forces acting on these objects, but let's say that I'm trying to investigate whether or not there are forces acting. I'm going to run the simulation and we'll talk about it afterwards. Here it goes. Okay, so the rectangle staying put, the square and the circle were both in motion, but let's look at them one at a time. Let's start with the rectangle. And again, we're trying to stress what Newton's first law has to say about these objects. So Newton's first law says, well, the velocity of the, of the rectangle was zero, it remained zero, therefore it didn't accelerate, and so Newton's first law says it must have not had a net force. No net force on the rectangle. By the way, notice that Newton's first law doesn't say that there were no forces, it simply says that there was no net force. Let's turn attention to the square. The square moved with a constant velocity of 5 meters per second to the left. Newton's first law is actually going to conclude the exact same thing about the square as it did the rectangle. Newton's first law doesn't care what the velocity is, it cares about it being constant. So, the square, even though it was moving, Newton's first law will conclude it certainly had no net force. It didn't accelerate, so it had no net force. So really, the force situation for the square and the rectangle are very similar. They both had no net force. Again, whether or not forces were present, Newton's first law can't tell. The circle is a different story. The circle is accelerating, and so Newton's first law can with confidence say there had to have been a net force acting on the circle. That's the only way you're going to get an acceleration, is by having a net force. So here's your summary. Both the rectangle and the square had no net forces, since neither of them accelerated. The circle certainly had a net force, because it did accelerate. That's really all there is to Newton's first law. All right, so that's really all there is to Newton's first law. I hope they got something out of this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And also subscribe to my channel if you want to get tutorials on other physics topics, including Newton's second and third laws, which really round up the set. Thanks for watching.